Wipe coding is a very trendy topic and I personally love it because it gives me the power to convert the ideas and the imaginations that I have in mind into clickable prototypes or sometime into real functional application in less than few hours with minimum effort and without having to know coding. Although this might sound fun, I have to admit that in so many cases I felt very frustrated using AI to do the wipe coding, mainly because in so many cases the results that I got from AI weren't accurate at all. And sometimes even the AI generate me the code with a lot of bugs and errors that solving those errors were a very complex process because each time I tried to solve one of those errors using the AI, I ended up having more errors, which were a very frustrating process. In addition, one of the other very important pain points that I experienced doing wipe coding uh, was that so often AI generated inconsistent results in terms of UI stylings and functionalities. I started to do wipe coding using ChatGPT and Cloud and later on I switched to Cursor and Copilot and now at the moment I'm using Figma Make. There are a couple of reasons that why I like Figma Make a lot and I really recommend you to start doing wipe coding within the Figma Make instead of other tools. The first reason is that it's very easy to use. The user interface is very simple and it's like the other AI based tool with this chat that you can put your prompter and then start your work. And the second reason is that actually it is a part of the Figma ecosystem. So it's very easy to switch between Figma design file and the Figma make itself. So you don't have to really jump around different tools. However, if you don't want to be dependent on Figma, it's of course better to start to do your wipe coding within the cursor or other tools that give you the full freedom and power. But that's not the topic of this video. In today's video, I would like to show you a couple of tricks and ways which will help you to increase the quality of the results that you are getting from AI within the Figma Make by providing a better and higher quality context of what you exactly want the model to generate. So bear with me until the end of this video if you are interested in this topic and don't forget to smash the subscribe button right now if you are new here and if you haven't done yet like this video and share this video with the other designers or in general anybody else that you feel like this video is going to help them as well now without further ado let's get us started so as i said uh, if you are doing wipe coding using the ai it doesn't matter which ai tools you are using or which model you are using if you would like to increase the quality of the results that you are getting from AI, you have to prepare and feed the AI model with the more information, with the uh, information that has enough or provide enough context for the AI model to understand you better and in result generate the things that are matching with your expectation. Uh, here you can see that I open Figma Make. For this video, let's imagine that we would like to create a page with a list of teasers uh, and one let's say filter bar in the left side including some items that we can filter out the teasers based on those items it's a very simple page actually so the first thing that we can use in order to give a context of what exactly we want to generate is of course the prompt that we are providing the ai models or ai uh, in general here the figma make is the tool that i'm using so we can start by giving a prompt. It is of course very important that how you kind of structure your prompt, the more explicit you are, the better result you most probably you will get from your process. However, the AI models are getting more powerful and I mean, even sometime very simple prompts such as the one that I provided and you can see here uh, can be sufficient actually. Uh, for example here i'm asking the figma make uh, to make me a page with the list of teasers and with the pagination in the right side and a filter menu in the left side let's send this prompt and see if this can be enough for figma make to understand what exactly i want to have so here we are we have uh, our first result it's very decent actually we have the pagination we have a bunch of teasers within our list and we have a category which is actually sorry i mean the filter menu that is really working is functional and it's filtering out the stuff based on what we select in the menu which is very impressive already however 
if I want to change something here, or if something is not exactly like how I want to do, uh, I can continue improving the result using the prompt. Uh, for example, in, in this case, if I want to introduce a primary color into my design, for example, if you can see right now, we don't have much of a color here. It's a very monochromic in, to be honest, there's no color. Uh, if I would like to do that, I can maybe come here again in the chat and ask the Figma make to add primary color to some of the items or elements and use blue as primary color. I can even give a code of the color to be more accurate, but even this one, I guess, is going to work well for us in this case. So as I said, we can continue improving the result using the prompt, which is in many cases actually enough, especially if we are uh, using the uh, Figma Make to just create some sort of prototype for the ideas we have and we don't care so much about the stylings and consistency in the uh, elements and in the user interface that we get from the AI. This might take a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna show you the result of our next iteration. So here we are, this is the result of the next iteration. And now we can see a bunch of elements with the primary color, which is the blue, which we provided using the prompt. And this helped the AI model to understand us better. So yeah, this is one way to get a more accurate result. However, this was the most obvious way. I would like to now show you the other features within the Figma Make, which is giving you the power to be more accurate and get more consistent results. Let's try one of the most important features that I recently used and I like it a lot, which is this feature, which you can see it here in our chat section, uh, which says, if you hover on it, which says that you can select a library and add it to uh, this project to this Figma make file, which is very, very interesting and very helpful thing actually. Um, at the moment, I have a no library here in my list, which I'm gonna show you how you can bring your library into uh, this list and you can select it and add it and attach it to your Figma uh, make file. Uh, let's open the Figma design file that we have our design library within it. You can see, for example, this Figma file has uh, the text styling, the colors. And if I open the, uh, let me open the variable window, you can see that we have a lot of variables defined here in different mode. To be honest, this is the default library that the Figma uh, actually provided us. So it has been done by Figma team itself. I did not do any new or I did not create any new library. You can use any uh, any libraries that you have. But the thing that we need to do is we need to publish and export this Figma file in order to be able to use it within our Figma make file, which means I'm going to switch to the asset panel, come and click on this book icon. And as an always, I publish my library if you come to this window, which you can see right now, it opens here, you can see all the assets that you are going to publish. Plus, you can see this new window, which says uh, that we can export this design library into the Figma Make and use it in the Figma Make, which at the moment I cannot do it because I did not publish the library yet. So we have to publish it first. When we publish one library, as you might know, uh, we are going to have access to that library all in whole Figma uh, environment, the working environment that we have. Uh, actually, we can define the access. We can give the access to everybody within our team or in a specific project. But that means that if we want to use this library in another Figma design file or in Figma make, we are able to attach that Figma library to that new Figma design file or Figma make, as I said. Uh, we're going to wait right now. You can see here that it indicates how many components and how many elements are going to get published. After that, we are going to get back to the Figma make, attach this design library to our Figma make file and continue working on our uh, result 
and see how we can get a better and more accurate result using our design library within the Figma Make. Now we published our library, we have to export it for the Figma Make. So let's get back to the same place again. And this time we can click on the export and a Figma to the Figma Make, which is going to take same amount of the time, I guess. Um, actually publishing the library itself, it took me around two to three minutes. It depends on how many components you are publishing or how many styles you have in your design, but it's gonna be something around the same time. Now we are back into the Figma Make. Just don't forget to refresh the page one, one time. Otherwise you won't see the exported Figma library within your list here. Then from this icon, which if you hover, it will say select the library, which I already told you. Uh, you can click and select the design library that we exported. Uh, and actually it's automatically uh, asking us if we want to rewrite this styling based on the library that we're gonna attach, which is very, very nice. Let's say rewrite, and then we can wait and see if things are gonna get differently. Um, I mean, maybe it wasn't the best example because we use uh, the default Figma library, which is also the default library that has been used within the Figma Make. Uh, so basically they are the same, but you saw that when I uploaded or attached the design library, the primary color that we had here was blue before that. And it's changed it to the primary color that has been defined in the design library. Uh, and this is one of the way that you can bring the design system that you have into your wipe coding. So it's more systematic and based on the design libraries that you have. So don't forget, this is going to increase the consistency uh, of what the AI is going to generate you. Plus there is one very small trick. If you switch to the code section here you will find the file under the uh, guideline of, uh, basically folder which you can write down the primary or the most important guidelines related to your design library or in general systematic way of working here that the AI can understand you even more you can already see some examples here like what exactly you can write down and the rest of the stuff which you can overwrite them how huh? you can write down your own stuff and explain what exactly you want to do now let's go for the next step the other way that we can change the way that ai is working or in general provide them more context is to copy and paste a frame from our design into our chat and ask the ai to use that as a reference so Let's see how that is going to work. I'm back into my design library file. Uh, one more time, I'm going to open the asset uh, list here. And here under the uh, basically example section or example folder, if you open your asset list for the first time, you, you will see these categories. Uh, from the example folder, you can bring uh, some uh, already uh, prepared as uh, basically templates, which I'm going to choose this one, which is matching with the one that we have a lot. Now, without doing anything special, I'm going to select this frame, copy it using the combination key co uh, command and C or control C in window, switch back to the Figma make. And here in the chat, I'm going to paste the frame. Okay, I mean, that was a little bit maybe too much, but you can see that uh, the frame that we brought from the Figma design file is attached properly into our chat. And now I will write down a prompt to explain what exactly Figma Make should do. Let's click on a prompt and wait and see if things are going to get closer to what we have in our design. And in general, uh, yeah, the ideas that we expect to see uh, in the Figma Make. So now we get something totally new. You can see that uh, Figma Make took the reference that we attached to our chat as a reference and changed everything related to that. For example, the footer now has the exact same styling and the rest of the elements having the different styling, which is coming from a reference. 
and the, everything else is also based on that but this is still using our design library as a main source of collecting the basically stylings and everything else so this is the other way which will help us to get more accurate result based on what we have in our design we can also use the other feature within the Figma, which is helping us to specifically focus on a specific part of our result and try to improve that part even more, which is basically this tool, you can find it here. Let me hide my camera view, point and edit. When you select this tool, you can hover over all elements within the page and you can select a specific one. For example, in this case, I select the P tag the HTML element uh, within this uh, div you can select anything else I don't know this logo we can select and some of the elements uh, we have also a couple of properties that we can change manually so we don't have to really use the AI uh, for some we have more uh, properties CSS properties for example here I can increase the size of the P tag here or um, I don't know we can do more stuff or we can directly uh, open the chat here using this option here and ask the AI to, cha to change the stuff uh, based on the prompt that we are giving. The other thing is also, if we know a little bit coding, we can go to our code, the source, and here we can do the changes manually, including the stylings or the overall structure of the page. So these were a couple of ways that you can increase the quality, accuracy, and consistency of the things that AI is going to generate for you within the Figma Make. You can find similar actually approaches w using the other tools. You can do the same stuff within the uh, cursor to increase again the quality. That was it for this video. I hope you learned something new and if it was so don't forget to smash the subscribe button, like this video and share it with the other designers in your community. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.